Now we'll take a look at the last form of renewable energy, which is hydrogen fuel cells. So a fuel cell is a place or a unit in which electricity is generated by a reaction between two chemicals. So let me direct your attention over to the left first with this formula. Two hydrogen molecules, which consist, each of the molecules consist of two hydrogen atoms, plus one oxygen molecule, and this is the oxygen molecule with two oxygen atoms like we breathe. And you can see that if we have the two hydrogen atoms on one side of the reaction and the one oxygen molecule on the other side of the reaction, then one of these H2s will combine with one of these O's to make water. And the other H2s will combine with the other single oxygen to form two molecules of water. So 2H2 plus 2 plus 1 O2 will give us two H2Os, not shown on the slide. So the result will be water. So let's take a look at how that happens. So first you have hydrogen uh, molecules that have been created. They don't naturally exist, so we will have to talk ab about that in just a moment. But the two molecules of hydrogen, which consist of two hydrogen atoms shown in gray here, are on one side of the reaction. And one molecule of oxygen, shown as the two red atoms, is on the other side of the reaction. So this H2 is forced through a membrane where the proton, uh, hydrogen only has one proton and one electron. So the proton passes through, but the electron cannot. So the electron flows in this direction and that creates electricity. And then after that flow has started, that electron will return to this side of the reaction layer. And on this side, you will have a combination of each of these oxygen atoms with the hydrogen proton and the hydrogen electron. And the end result is water, H2O. So how do we first of all come up with these hydrogen molecules that are H2? So these are created through um, by using a fossil fuel to split the water because H2 molecules do not exist naturally. So we're still using a fossil fuel here. And the use of a fossil fuel would be a negative side to hydrogen fuel cells. On the positive side, we have the fact that no pollutants are released. We simply have water as the end product, so that's good. Um, the only the other really great thing about these hydrogen fuel cells is that they are 80% efficient, which is extremely efficient. Um, but some of the other problems we have are hydrogen. Mm, well, it's um, it's has a lot of pressure. It is explosive in this form. So it's a little bit difficult if you imagine a distribution system of um, hydrogen fuel gas stations, if you will, containing hydrogen that's being pumped into your car. Um, what if you have an accident and that uh, fuel tank is ruptured? Then most likely it would result in an explosive situation. So that can be, um, that can be an issue as well. So we have a variety of renewables and we have a variety of non-renewables. And we need to draw from these what we can to plan our energy future. So let's take a last look at that. Oops, let me go back. Uh, boom, boom, boom. It's also expensive to make. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, how can we plan our energy future? So all countries, and ours in particular, will need a varied strategy to meet our future energy challenges. So we need to conserve the energy sources that we have, resources that we have. We need to increase energy efficiency. We need to rely on a greater percentage of renewable sources less than the non-renewables. 
and we need to develop new technologies to improve energy storage and energy distribution. And any energy sources, resources that we look at, should be evaluated based on net energy, how much do you get out of it, availability, is it deep in the ground or widely available, and of course the impact on the environment and the impact on human health. Sometimes you might have a net positive here, a negative there, and a positive or a negative here. So it, it really needs to be evaluated and considered. And I think that's where, yep, that's a wrap for this chapter.